Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Zach Falk with Black Diamond Mortgage and Ian Padron with Windermere Real Estate here in Whitefish. And we are bringing you a market update for the Flathead Valley in 10 minutes or less. So stick around, it won't take too much of your time. We're gonna provide valuable information on what to do given data and metrics in today's real estate world. So Ian, what do you have for us to kick us off? Yeah, for sure, thanks Zach. So, you know, the common question these days is what's the market doing? And I think that's been the question for the last two years. First, it was really crazy and it was pretty easy to just tell everyone, well, set it and forget it, things are going nuts. Uh, there's really not any rhyme or reason to how to buy or sell a home. And it's changed dramatically since we had our first big rate hikes, basically like a year ago today was when things started kind of running away. Um, and I think that's been the impetus to where we are now. So things we're seeing in the Flathead specifically, um, I think it's always important to kind of compare Flathead to the nation because mm -hmm. a lot of times people's news sources, um, whether it's, you know, on, on television, social media, um, they're not through the scope locally. It's national, it's nationally nationwide. So you see things like, you know, Western metro areas like Phoenix, like Boise, massive corrections, 15 to 20% um, reduction in new home pricing, uh, things that are you know, relatively scary when you see that, but we haven't experienced that in, in Flathead, and I don't think that we will. Currently, we're, we're down about 8% from the high, and that's taking you know all single-family residential in, in Flathead County. We've actually seen a small uptick in the last month and a half in pricing. So I've got some stats right here just for the month of April in, in Flathead County. Um, if you look at all price ranges, single family in Flathead County, um, the median home price in terms of like the, the rolling monthly average, uh, we're still at $582,000, okay? So the, the absolute like monthly peak was, that was June of last year. That was the, the highest median pricing in history in Flathead County. Um, that was 758. Okay. okay. So if you compare those two numbers, pretty significant. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of folks aren't talking about right now in the flathead is just the inventory issue. You know, we hear inventory, 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 but what about it? Well, we're just not seeing as many homes hit the market, right? We have people who have two, three, four percent mortgages that are not super motivated to sell, even though they typically would be if there wasn't such a delta between their current mortgage rate and their new one. So all of these houses that we would have anticipated would be listed this spring in a somewhat less volatile rate market, uh, sellers are still living there and they're not mm -hmm. sellers. So the buyers that we do have who are qualified and hot to trot, um, they're keeping the prices up because we just don't have the supply. We've still got good demand, but we do not have the supply, which is why we're seeing those prices continue to hover upwards. Um, that's where we're at right now in the spring market. I wish I could say like, yeah, the tidal wave of listings is coming, but I just don't see it at this point with the, the rate environment. How about bidding wars? Are you seeing a fair amount of those given the supply demand issue you just yep. talked about? Yep. So I wouldn't categorize them as true bidding wars at this point. Now, I think of like, you know, peak 2022, 2021, when it was, you know, first weekend, there were 20 or 30 showings. Monday morning and you've got an inbox full of offers. That was as, as crazy as it ever get. I mean, that was like straight up bloodbath. Um, we're not there. Places that are turnkey, marketed well, priced accordingly, multiple offer situations for sure. And that's more of like two or three offers come in. Um, not the half dozen to a dozen like sure. in, in the peak. But yeah, we have seen an uptick of that. And I think it is related to the fact that there's just not much going around. The people who have to move, have to buy something, either they're you know relocating here for a job um, or they've got another kiddo and they absolutely do not have space, they have to buy now. Um, they're kind of forced to, to have to compete with those other buyers mm -hmm. because we just don't have inventory to soak them all up. You bet. So then on the finance side of things, which relates heavily to what we're talking about because oftentimes the financial markets, mortgage-backed securities, bonds, treasuries, all these things impact what Ian's talking about when it comes to the, the fact that sellers are faced with a new interest rate should they sell and go buy a new house. So just to give you guys some metrics on kind of where things sit, uh, today is actually uh, May 3rd and the Fed is meeting today. Chairman Powell will be presenting around 2.30 p.m. Eastern. 
And those meetings are always important for interest rates. Um, we're, it's about a 94% probability that we'll see a, another 25 basis point hike in the federal funds rate. That should put the target around five to five and a quarter percent. Remember, that's on the federal funds rate. So that's where banks are getting their money from. So that's not the interest rate you can expect as a consumer. Uh, that's just kind of the benchmark for what interest rates will look like. But what really matters for those of you watching this is what's going to happen in the future because a lot of times I hear people that are either waiting to do something because they'd like to see what happens with the economy or they'd like to see what happens with the interest rate. Um, so that's what I'm going to provide for you is kind of some, some feedback on what could happen. It, it truthfully feels like we have a little bit of a 50-50 on our hands. And I believe we'll see some stuff this summer that's going to help us decide which way we're going. And what I mean by that 50-50 is you've got kind of the bullish stock investors who are pretty uh, excited about the fact that the Fed may be pausing interest rates hikes, which would mean that uh, the stock market does well, money gets cheaper. Uh, but then the bearish side of, of things are saying, no, the key factor that we're all talking about, which is inflation, it doesn't make sense that we'll see uh, a, a pause on rate hikes. And for those of you who've watched the news, rate hikes is what it's all been all about for the last 12 to 16 months. The Fed has done it regularly. So part of what we're dealing with as a, as a nation and as an economy is an inflation issue. And that was talked a lot about last year, um, but it still deserves to be talked about now because the term being thrown out is that inflation right now is sticky. So the PCE, the Personal Consumer Expenditures Index, it's sitting right about 4.6% inflation is kind of what that metric tells us. And the Fed would like to see that at 2%. That's a big gap. And so the only way that the Fed believes they're going to get there is by raising the cost of money, i.e. the federal funds rate. Um, and so the data to me shows that we could continue to see rate hikes throughout this year. Um, I think we'll see rate relief, you know, a good 12 to 18 months out, maybe 24 at the most. But why that matters for you is that with the supply and demand challenges that Ian talked about, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to wait if the Fed intends to continue to raise interest rates because that has an impact on, on you as, uh, and your ability to afford these homes. Uh, and then also fit the payments into your monthly budgets. So we need to, a couple metrics to watch. If you're interested in the market is watch the inflationary rate, watch the unemployment rate. The other indicator here of why rates may not come down immediately is that the job market is still really strong. And uh, the JOLTS data came out uh, yesterday on the second. JOLTS is job openings and labor turnover. And uh, we did see a little bit of softening there. Uh, it's a lower number than it was in the last couple of years, but it's kind of a lagging indicator. So it takes a little while before the Fed sees that and decides that it's worth considering in their decision making. So what am I trying to say, Ian? What's the bottom line for yeah. people? Yep. So I think it's important, you know, anytime you get stats, what does this mean as a buyer? What does this mean as a seller? For buyers right now, you know, and I think a lot of times people scoff at it and they're just like, oh, it's just a real estate agent trying to sell homes. Um, I think that buying now, people who get in even with a potentially higher rate are going to be thanking themselves when they see the floodgates open when we're back around five to five and a half percent for a 30 year fixed. Because when that happens, you know, and you know this, the, the buyer and seller psychology, typically it's like a one and a half percentage point in terms of interest rate that's like, not a big deal. You go past that, people pump the brakes massively. So if you've got the vast majority of people in you know, the high threes to low fours and rates come back down into the fives, now they're willing to actually eat that cost, um, list their home, rates are lower, so more people are going to be buying, the affordability goes up, and I think that we're probably going to see a pricing increase very comparable to what we saw the last two years, mm -hmm. which when that happens, you know, the amount of money that you think you're saving by having a slightly lower interest rate uh, is massively outweighed by the pricing increase. So I think it's a fantastic time to buy with a creative loan product, whether that's a you know an arm or having seller paid concessions to, to use as a rate buy down. 
gets you in when there's not as much competition. For sellers, I think that if you can wait until rates are lower, you're, you're going to be playing with a much bigger buyer pool. Um, two years from now, people who sell a house, I think it's going to be significantly more expensive than it is today. So if you're not having a move, you know, you can make it work for another couple of years. I think that that's a really strong bet and it would pay off pretty significant dividends. So that's what it means in, in my opinion for buyers and sellers in the flathead. I think that's great. And we all, for those of you who've been here for a while, you really have only have to have been here for about five years to see this. Uh, what Ian's talking about is spot on the amount of money that you'd make in appreciation of a property when compared with the amount of interest you'll pay on a mortgage. Those numbers are crazy. The appreciation far outweighs the interest paid. And as you see Whitefish and Columbia Falls and Kalispell and the Flathead Valley continue its upward trend, uh, that's only going to get more intense in my opinion. Uh, that's why I'm personally trying to hold properties where I can. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't work for everybody. So the bottom line is do what makes sense for you. Uh, you can't time the market perfectly. It just never works that way. So one of the phrases I like to use is time in the market is far better than timing the market. Yep. So that would be uh, kind of my final advice to you. What are your final thoughts, Ian? Yeah, I think that's a really good way to do it. And, you know, I have a, another kind of corny saying that I always <laughs> like too is um, don't wait to buy real estate buy real estate and then wait. And that's the thing, right? Is like you get into a house now, you might have a little bit bigger of a mortgage payment than you anticipated. Um, but in a couple of years, you can refinance out. Let's say you pay an extra $10,000 in the first two years, which would be exorbitant. It would probably be much less than that. An extra $10,000 on your loan product during that time period. But you got the house for $200,000 less than it's going to be in two years. Do the math. Right. So it's one of those things. Get in when you're ready. Get in when you can find something that works for you and, and put it to work for you. So awesome. Great advice. Well, thank you, guys. We hope you find value in this data. We're going to continue bringing it to you. So until next time, we'll catch you next month.